Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Fabien Roque. I'm an associate professor of economics with uh, Paris Dauphine University, and I'm also an economic consultant with Compass Lexicon. In the next few minutes, I will discuss with you uh, electricity markets, and I will basically try and explain to you what are the specific issues about electricity which make it a special good and imply some constraints in the way we design electricity markets, and look at the way we apply this in the US and in Europe. If we start by looking at some of the constraints um, for electricity, we see that the most relevant one, the one that is often quoted first, is the fact that electricity as good is non-storable, at least in large quantities and at an economic cost today. Of course, batteries are developing and we have had hydro storage, but largely this is a good that is difficult or expensive to store in large quantities. In addition to that, this is a good where uh, the supply and demand are highly variable, on the supply side, it's not just renewables, which are valuable, but we have also um, a number of variations during the year, uh, for instance, for hydro production or, or the availability of thermal plants um, is not always 100%. Um, if we look at demand, a specific feature of electricity is that demand is fairly inelastic, at least for part of it. And again, this is um, a cause of a major challenge in the way we design markets. And finally, we've got um, the laws of Kirchhoff um, in the networks, which means that essentially demand must be equal to supply at all times, but also in every node of the network. So if we now turn to what that means for the way we design power markets, I think we can first look at the way a typical market for a typical good would be organized. We would have, on the one hand side, producers of that good. On the other side, downstream, we would have suppliers and direct consumers of that good. And in between, of course, we would have the market. Now, of course, we would also have possibly traders, speculators playing a role here. With electricity, we have a need to ensure that the system will remain in balance in real time at every node, and we therefore need a system operator. The system operator in Europe takes the form of a transmission system operator. And this is different from the US approach, where basically we have an independent system operator. Let me tell you a little bit more about these two approaches. In Europe, the transmission system operator is the owner and the operator of the network, and it is a separate body from the market places. In US, in contrast, with the independent system operator, we have in the same body the market operator and the system operator, which is distinct from the ownership of the transmission network. Now, of course, there are pro and cons of the two approaches, and this has been the subject of a long debate among experts. But I think it's worth emphasizing that in the two approaches, there is a difference between the financial period of trading, which is something that happens before real time, before typically get closure, that you see on that chart, and the physical operation of the network after get closure, when the system operator, be it the TSO or the ISO, takes control of the network. So you see here a sequence of power markets from the forward markets, which start a few years before real time, to the day ahead market, which in Europe plays a key role, to the real time market. And essentially, at the real time gate closure, which is typically one hour before real time in most markets, the system operator takes control of the system. And he or she can run the balancing uh, mechanism or market uh, to balance the positions of market players and of the system and use a number of ancillary services, reserves, primary, secondary, tertiary reserves, to make sure the system is balanced in real time at every point in the network. Now, to conclude, it's worth emphasizing that the designs in Europe and in the US are not the same. You can see here, uh, basically, the two different approaches. In blue, you see the transactions occurring among market participants. In orange, you see the transactions concluded between market participants and the system operator, or the TSO in Europe. What is quite clear is that in Europe, we have a number of principles which are quite different from the US. First, we have self-dispatch in most markets in Europe, whilst in the US, you have a centralized dispatch. The second thing that is clear is that the main market in Europe is the day-ahead market.
and we have a concept of balance responsible parties, which decentralize the obligation of balancing to the parties, largely based on the day ahead time frame. In the US, in contrast, as you see, you have co-optimization first on the day ahead uh, in, many in many states, and then uh, for uh, the real-time markets as well, you have co-optimization with reserves. So if we now look more specifically at the differences between Europe and the US, what is clear is that there is almost a philosophical difference between the two approaches. The first thing to say is that in the US, we typically have a two-settlement system, their head and real-time, with a centralized dispatch. And this is providing for a quite high consistency of process and possibility of arbitrage between the real-time and the day ahead. In contrast, in Europe, what we typically have is the main market, which is the day ahead market, and then a residual role for balancing, which is run by the balancing mechanism by the TSO. If we detail a little bit more these differences first on the day ahead, what is clear is, again, these unit-specific bits um, in the US, while essentially we have self-scheduling of units um, in Europe. Looking at real-time markets and balancing responsibility, in Europe, we have balancing responsible parties, BRPs, which are incentivized to self-balance and only a residual role for balancing for the system operator, the transmission system operator. Whilst in the US, it's primarily the ISOs, the RTOs, which have that balancing responsibility. What is clear also is that there is often virtual bidding, or as I said, a form of arbitrage and courage between the day ahead and real-time markets in the US, what this is more difficult uh, in practice in Europe. Operational reserves uh, are typically co-optimized with energy in the US, whilst reserve capacity procurement is quite separate in Europe from the uh, energy market clearing. Congestion management, again, very different approaches, where in the US, you have typically a fully integrated approach with nodal pricing, whilst in Europe, congestion management is treated through, well, first market couplings between different price zones, and of course, ad hoc redispatch actions taken by the TSOs. And finally, market power mitigation is also a difference where in the US we have a more systematic ex-ante approach um, via test and, and uh, auditing of the bids, whilst in, the U uh, in Europe it's much more based on the investigation exposed by the national regulatory authorities. It's been a debate going on for a long time, what approach is the best? And to conclude, I would say, again, um, both approaches have pro and cons. What is clear is that if we move to a system with a lot of renewables, it will be important to ensure that we trade as close as possible to real time. And in that sense, the US approach, and at least some of the recent developments with co-optimization of reserve um, and energy are quite interesting and probably something to learn from, from the European side. Thank you very much for your attention.